This is a mega truck. It can fit three to four times more logs in it than a regular long truck without sacrificing on speed, and it keeps all of your wood from sliding out. For comparison, this is what it's like as a normal truck, and you can see when I try to drive, it can barely hold any of the wood. With the mega truck though, you can fit so much more in it, and all of it stays in the truck much, much better. Also, since it's much taller, it's also flip resistant, meaning you can drive this thing off a cliff without flipping over, which can save a lot of time. I mean, just look at how many oak logs I have been able to fit into to it and nothing falls out when driving. And yes, it works perfectly fine when auto unloading as well. Just remember that you have to go as fast as you can up the ramp because the added weight makes it so you can get stuck easier. And the sheer amount of wood in this thing also makes me realize that I might need to build walls on the side of my auto unloader. But oh, I, I oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I forgot that my Sama was set to make really, really long sticks. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Okay, but anyways, you can see just how much wood I was able to get from just one load. Look at how much wood there is. It's even overflowing. This is honestly insane. Now, the main benefit to having this over just having trailers on the back of your truck is that you can back up without having any problems with normal trailers. You end up getting stuck and it's just a whole headache, especially when you're in the maze or in just tight spaces. It is very difficult to deal with trailers, so people generally don't bring them when they go to the maze or into tight spaces, but with this thing, you can totally back up and it's just a lot more mobile. You can go wherever you want and it will basically be the exact same as having just a normal truck, just with a ton of extra storage. Oh yeah, and good luck driving off cliffs with regular trailers. Now obviously this thing is going to cost you a little bit extra to respawn each time, so it's going to cost you 520 lumber bucks extra uh, compared to the 380 that it's going to cost us just to respawn a normal truck. So that's going to be 900 each time you want to respawn, and it doesn't always stay together when you reload, but it's still going to save you a ton of time regardless, so even if you don't have a ton of money, it's still worth at least having on your base because any other time that you will just want to spawn a regular truck you can do so by pressing the button on the truck spawner itself so really the only thing that you lose out on by having this on your base is the cost of the materials to build it which I'm going to assume most people probably already have on their base already and considering how useful it is to have on your base it's really not that big of a deal but yeah, anyways, let's just get straight into how you can get a mega truck for yourself. So to start off, you're going to need all of the required materials on screen right now. The blueprints, by the way, you do not need to place on your base. You just have to have them in your blueprint book. Alrighty guys, so once you have gotten all of the required materials, let's just get straight into how you build the spawner for this thing. So what I've done is I have laid out all of the materials. I have the Vels all-purpose hauler as well as two long trucks and then I also have a button and two wires here and then the blueprints uh, we will just place through the blueprint book. So what you're going to want to do is place your Vels all-purpose hauler wherever you want this I'd recommend at least one stud away from the edge of your plot just so that you have a little bit of space but it doesn't really matter all that much so you're going to want to place it down where you want it and then you're going to want to get out a, a large floor and place one on both sides of the spawner like so making sure that when you place them that there is no gap underneath them it is flush with the ground and once you have done that you'll also want to place another layer of large floors so that they are stacked too high on both sides. 
Next, you're going to want to take a small floor and place one right here. And then on the other side, these are just going to help you see where you are at. So you can also place a tiny floor on both sides. This is just going to be the measurements for where you need to place the trailers. And then finally, what you're going to want to do is take a large floor and place it one grid mark away from the edge of the large floor right here and then you're going to want to do the exact same thing on the other side except for on this side on the left side you're going to also want to place a large tile Alrighty, now it is time to uh, place in your trailer, so you're going to want to make sure that you orient your trailer so that it is facing this way with the button right here, and you're just going to want to place it against the tile like so, and you're going to want to make sure that it's in line with the little floor that we did in the front like so making sure that it's seamless and then once you place it you want to do a check to make sure that everything is seamless that there is no gaps right here if there is a gap right here then it won't work you need to make sure that it is all seamless right here and once you do that you also want to make sure that right here is also in line with the tiny floor if that is all the case, you can move on to your next trailer and you just want to basically do the exact same thing. Just place it like this, making sure that it is in line right here and that there is no gaps between the large floors. And it looks like I have placed it in all correctly. You can also make sure that it is in line by also putting some small floors right here to make sure. Alright, once that is done and you have made sure that everything is in line, you can destroy all of the guide blueprints. And then you can place down your button. Now you're going to want to place the button so that the output of the button actually makes direct contact with the button right here. You're going to want to make sure that the button is at least going to respawn the car. You can actually test it and if it respawns the car when you press the button then you have done it correctly. And now all you have to do is wire up the two trailers as well so you're actually going to want to make sure that you avoid doing this because that's going to make it hard to drive out so what you're going to want to do instead is place your wire kind of like this so that it will block the truck as little as possible that's fine and then you're going to want to do the exact same thing on the other side like so now you can finally test it by pressing spawn on the truck and if everything does not start violently shaking around and things don't attach then you have done it correctly if it does do that then you're going to want to make sure that you follow the tutorial more closely but yeah now you can back out of it i would actually recommend backing out of it because it is much easier to back out than to go forward as you can see it's just a little bit more of a headache to try to go forward so I generally prefer to go backwards but if you do get stuck like I have then you can just move one of the spawn pads and then drive out and then you can press B and it will go right back to where it was so yeah that is how you get one of these um, by the way you're going to want to make sure that you open these tailgates up when you're loading wood into it just because that'll make it a little bit easier to put things in and once you're done you can close them so that it will keep everything contained by the way guys, if you want to connect this thing up to your auto unloader, you just want to connect a wire from the button of your auto unloader all the way over to your spawner and you can just connect it to any of the wires. I'm just going to do the one right here. So in this joint, now that will work. 
as you can see, it works just fine. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it has helped you. Make sure that you guys pick up the 40k merch. It is still on sale and it will go off sale once I hit 50k. So you're going to want to get the limited edition 40k merch. And also make sure you join my Discord server if you want access to free VIP servers, giveaways, trading, and more. So yeah, anyways, that is pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next video once it's out. See ya!